Hello. Today we will delve into the case of a terrifying demon from Hubei. Over the course of eight years, he committed no fewer than 36 crimes, resulting in the deaths of 21 people and leaving dozens seriously injured. The severity of his actions was merely to sharpen his skills. This demon even declared that if given the chance, he would kill 500 people. So, who is this criminal and how did he become such a monstrous killer? Zhang Mingao was born in 1963 into an ordinary family in Wuhan. His father, Zhang Mingxiang, was a factory worker. Due to having many children, life was very difficult. Mingxiang started taking on extra work to support the family, but he was reported by someone, leading to criminal charges and his arrest. From that point on, the burden of supporting the family fell on the frail shoulders of Mingao's mother. During this period, the family often faced food shortages and no relatives were willing to help, not even with a kind word. Not long after, Mingao's mother became exhausted and died. At that time, Mingao was still very young and could only rely on his elder sister to help support the family. However, the siblings could not take on any official work and had to scavenge for spoiled food and fallen leaves at the market to survive. Mingao endured this hardship for over two years. Eventually, they made it through this tumultuous period, and Mingxiang was released from prison and assigned a job at a factory. The family finally had a glimmer of hope. However, fate seemed to play tricks on them. A few months after starting work, Mingxiang made a mistake during operation, damaging the machinery. Normally, everyone in the workshop would share the responsibility. However, seeing that he was honest, his colleagues put all the blame on Mingxiang. Having just started working, he couldn't afford to pay the large compensation to the factory and could only make small payments over time. But after several years in prison, Mingxiang's health had deteriorated. This shock worsened his condition, leading to depression and further decline. Not long after, he passed away. Typically, when someone dies, everything ends. However, after Mingxiang's death, the factory held the entire workshop responsible. Although each person only lost a few cents, this loss filled Mingxiang's colleagues with resentment towards his family. These malicious co-workers began to vent their anger. Whenever they saw the Gao siblings on the street, they would hurl insults and obscene remarks. This made Mingao realize the cold, unfeeling nature of these people. After his father's death, the five-member family could only rely on the eldest sister's earnings to survive. But at that time, she only made 24 yuan a month, insufficient to support her younger siblings. Mingao, being young, had to go out and find work to help the family. However, due to his young age, no one would hire him. Later, Mingao sought help from his father's factory. Seeing his dire situation, the manager agreed to let him work as a temporary laborer. Despite this, Mingao cherished the job opportunity. He worked diligently day and night, but his efforts not only failed to bring the desired results, the company also deliberately pressured him and withheld his subsidies. His co-workers made things difficult for him, assigning him all the heavy work. At home, he had to endure bullying from neighbors. Mingao's childhood never experienced warmth from others. Now, in his mind, there was no good person in the world. Especially after learning the truth about his father's false accusation, Mingao constantly thought about avenging his father. One day, he secretly broke into the factory's storage room, hoping to find a list of those who had falsely accused his father. But he found nothing. When his attempt at revenge failed, Mingao had a sinister idea to take revenge on society. With this thought, Mingao began exercising frantically to improve his physical strength. Sometimes he even spent nights alone in the cemetery to train his courage. Once everything was ready, Mingao started carrying out his bloody murder plan. First, he decided to kill a few people to build his courage, but to kill he needed weapons. However, this did not pose a problem for Gao. With the knowledge he gained as a worker, he learned to make guns from steel pipes. Having created the weapon, Gao now needed ammunition. He managed to deceive his uncle into obtaining legal gunpowder certification, and then he experimented to create bullets that matched his homemade gun. Looking at the weapon in his hand, Gao's face displayed a sinister smile. To test the weapon's power, Gao went to a remote village and experimented on chickens and dogs. Unexpectedly, the gun was remarkably effective. From then on, his revenge plan officially began. Late at night on December 20th, 1983, Gao went out on a bicycle to find a target. At that moment, a middle-aged man appeared before him. Gao scanned the area and realized they were the only two people on the road. Silently, he adjusted his bicycle to follow the man and then shot him. The middle-aged man died on the spot. This was the first murder Gao committed. Since it was his first murder, Gao's inner self was still very confused. Therefore, over the next five years, he tested his gun five more times. In total, he killed three people and seriously injured three others. 
Only a sanitation worker named Bai Jing was lightly injured. During this time, although Wuhan police launched a large-scale investigation after the first case, due to limited conditions and no compelling evidence at the scene, Gao remained at large. After killing several people to build his courage, Gao was still unsatisfied. He thought that besides having a gun, he needed money because without money you can't do big things. Thus, Gao began engaging in robbery. On June 1, 1987, he broke into a roadside grocery store, killed the clerk, and stole over 6 million yuan. To prevent the police from finding evidence, he burned all the evidence with gasoline after the robbery. Although this was a big score for Gao, he still felt it was not enough and decided to continue committing crimes. Over the next two years, he carried out several robberies, stealing more than 3,800 yuan, 1,100 yuan, 400 yuan in company bonds, and 39,300 yuan in enterprise budget bonds. However, after a series of cases over the years, Gao realized his homemade gun lacked sufficient power and was troublesome to reload. Therefore, he set his sights on the guns at the police station. At 3 a.m. on December 10, 1989, Gao broke into the police station and after a while safely left with the guns. On the morning of December 12, 1989, just the day after acquiring the guns, Gao couldn't wait any longer. At that time, 27-year-old worker Li had just finished his night shift, and 19-year-old snack vendor Zhang was setting up her stall for breakfast sales. Both innocent individuals died under Gao's gun. Although each person died from a single bullet, Gao still felt he had not fully mastered his shooting skills. Therefore, a few days later, he used the gun to kill another passerby to test his abilities. On April 19, 1990, he used the gun to kill two night shift workers and stole more than 3,000 yuan in cash. On May 11, 1990, Gao killed a pair of brothers and stole more than 5,000 yuan. After committing several crimes, Gao realized that working alone could not achieve much. To accomplish bigger things, he needed a team. Therefore, Gao started recruiting partners with one specific requirement. They must not be married. Gao believed that having a family would lead to concerns and distractions. Based on this criterion, he eventually recruited three people, Song Jian, Hong Bi, and Peng Yi, who were either former colleagues or schoolmates. These recruits were all lazy, gluttonous, and indulgent. For these new members, Gao conducted special training, instructing them to view their criminal behavior as a lifelong career and never to retreat. Once he had enough people, Gao became even more arrogant. In the following year, the four men carried out more than 20 consecutive crimes in Wuhan, robbing assets worth over 100,000 yuan. Although they acquired a lot of money, Gao's ultimate goal was not wealth, but to prepare for his revenge plan, his so-called great work. Gao remained unmarried and spent his time learning, studying police case-solving methods, firearm usage, and military tactics, then applying what he learned to his crimes. To exact revenge, on February 15, 1991, while passing by a factory in Wuhan, Gao saw some staff setting off fireworks. Annoyed by the noise, he got into a conflict with them. However, since the group was large and he was unarmed, Gao chose to endure the humiliation for the moment. That night, he brought a Type 64 pistol and some other items, climbed over the wall into the factory's duty room, and after shooting dead one guard on duty, he sought out the three people he had encountered earlier for revenge. Ultimately, Gao used a brutal method to retaliate against the four individuals with whom he had a minor conflict. This case also caused panic throughout Wuhan, and the victims' families demanded that the police quickly apprehend this demon. To solve the case quickly, the entire police force in Wuhan cooperated, and even higher authorities deployed a large number of experts to Wuhan to assist in the investigation. However, because the victims had no connection and the perpetrators' actions were unclear with little physical evidence, progress in the case was very slow. After this murder, Gao realized he had committed a major crime and needed to hide. But who would have thought that just two months later, he would kill again? On the evening of April 9, 1991, Gao and his accomplices broke into a businessman's house and killed Mr. Tuyan and stole a large amount of property. However, because the police station was right next to the businessman's house, the sound of the gunfire drew dozens of police officers to pursue them. However, due to the darkness and limited investigative techniques, Gao and his accomplices managed to escape. On the evening of October 1, 1991, Gao killed two tobacco merchants and stole 70,000 yuan. Since it was not yet completely dark, and it was rush hour, the sound of Gao's gunshots attracted the attention of nearby residents. Some brave young men voluntarily chased after him, but they were all shot and wounded, and one young man died. After the case, the central leaders, 
the Ministry of Public Security, the Hubei Provincial Public Security Department, and the Wuhan Municipal Public Security Bureau all paid close attention to the case. The central leaders even issued several directives, demanding the organization of forces to solve the case quickly. The chief of Wuhan police presided over and led the force to conduct a thorough investigation. Based on descriptions from victims and citizens, they learned that the suspect was a Wuhan native, about 1.67 to 1.7 meters tall, aged between 25 and 30, wearing a blue coat and white branded sneakers. On the evening of October 21, 1991, the police received a report from a citizen stating that a tenant in Jiayun was very suspicious. According to the landlord, a few days earlier, when he was cleaning the drainage system, he found a bullet. Combining this with the recent murders, he immediately reported to the police. They then brought a sketch of the suspect for the landlord to identify, and the landlord recognized the person in the sketch as Gao. Due to the serious nature of the case, the police quickly mobilized over 100 officers from various forces to make the arrest. At around 9 p.m. that evening, with the help of the landlord, the police successfully broke into Gao's house. When he opened the door, a policeman quickly subdued Gao on the floor. He tried to escape and draw his gun, but the police swiftly restrained him. After being arrested, Gao confessed and provided information about his accomplices. That same night, the police mobilized over 100 officers, forming multiple teams to apprehend them. Within a few hours, his gang members, Song Jian, Hung Bi, and Peng Yi, were arrested. According to Gao's confession, over the span of eight years, they committed 36 cases, resulting in 21 deaths and injuring dozens of others. They stole over 178,500 yuan. But all of this was just to hone their skills. According to Gao, if he hadn't been caught by the police, he would have killed more than 500 people to achieve his goal of revenge against society. On December 23, 1991, the four were sentenced to death. Three days later, they were taken to the execution site. With this, the eight-year-long gun murder case in Hubei officially ended. From this case, we can see that in this world, there exist terrifying societal avengers, cruel people without mercy. With burning hatred, they do not hesitate to take the lives of others just to satisfy their own feelings. As the ancients often said, do not judge a book by its cover, as anyone can become cold-blooded and turn into a demon if they do not maintain their composure. Always keep a cool head.